just enjoying sitting here for a minute, listening to the bird song, ushering in a new dawn. And uh, that's what we're going to do together with uh, the white edition of A Course in Miracles, ushering in a new dawn of understanding, a new dawn of collaboration that we call salvation or atonement, where we accept at one moment with all that is for ourselves that we may offer it to our world and liberate our minds from the belief in I'm separate from you and uh, I have my own agenda or my own autonomy and we begin to work together for a common good which uh, is unconditional love. <laughs> that can't be so bad, can it? So today we're on lesson 73, I will there be light. Today we are considering the will you share with God. This is not the same as the ego's idle wishes out of which darkness and nothingness arise. This will, oh, the will you share with God has all the power of creation in it. <laughs> And for me, that's slightly dawning. I had a realisation of what I did with all the power of creation last time. Manifest the world in which I think I'm this body. And it's like, whoops, I, I need some guidance. Luckily, its wishes are not idle in the sense that they can make a world of illusions in which your belief can be very strong. There you go. But they are idle in terms of creation. They make nothing that is real. Idle wishes and grievances are partners or co-makers in picturing the world you see. And there's a difference between making and creating. Okay, Complete difference. The wishes of the ego give rise to it and the ego's need for grievances, which are necessary to maintain it, peoples it with figures that seem to attack you and call for righteous judgment. They become the middlemen the ego employs to traffic in grievances and stand between your awareness and your brother's reality. Beholding them, you do not know your brothers nor yourself. <laughs> Everything the body's eyes see is a form of temptation. Your will is lost to you in this strange bartering in which guilt is traded back and forth and grievances increase with each exchange. Can such a world have been created by the will the Son of God shares with his Father? Did God create disaster for his Son? Creation is the will of both together. Would God create a world that kills himself? Today we will try once more to reach the world that is in accordance with your will. The light is in it because it does not oppose the will of God. It is not heaven, but the light of heaven shines on it. That's really cool. It is not heaven, but the light of heaven shines upon it. Right. So the forgiven world is still not heaven, but the light of heaven shines upon it. And you can see through that light. Darkness has vanished. The ego's idle wishes have been withdrawn. Yet the light which shines upon this world reflects your will. And so it must be in you that we will look for it. Your picture of the world can only mirror what is in. The source of neither light nor darkness can be found without. Grievances darken your mind and you look out on a darkened world. Forgiveness lifts the darkness, reasserts your will and lets you look on a world of light. We have repeatedly emphasized that the barrier of grievances is easily passed and cannot stand between you and your salvation. The reason is very simple. Do you really want to be in hell? <laughs> yeah, simple. Do you really want to weep and suffer and die? Forget the ego's arguments which seek to prove all this is really heaven. You know it is not so. You cannot want this for yourself. There is a point beyond which illusions cannot go. There is a point beyond which illusions cannot go. Suffering is not happiness, and it is happiness you really want. 
Such is your will in truth, and so salvation is your will as well. You want to succeed in what we are doing, what we are trying to do today. We undertake it with your blessing and your glad accord. We will succeed today if you remember that you will salvation for yourself. You will to accept God's plan because you share in it. You have no will that can really oppose it and you do not want to do so. Salvation is for you. Above all else, you want the freedom to remember who you really are. Today it is the ego which stands powerless before your will. Your will is free and nothing can prevail against it. Therefore, we undertake the exercises for today in happy confidence, certain that we will find what it is your will to find and remember what it is your will to remember. No idle wishes can detain us nor deceive us with an illusion of strength. Today, let your will be done and end forever the insane belief that it is hell in place of heaven that you choose. We will begin our longer practice periods with the recognition that God's plan for salvation and only his is in accord with your will. It is not the purpose of an alien power thrust upon you unwillingly. It is the purpose here on which you and your father are in perfect accord. You will succeed today. The time appointed for the release of the Son of God from hell and from all idle wishes. You will succeed today at the time appointed for the release from God and all idle wishes. His will is now restored to his awareness. He is willing this very day to look upon the light in him and be saved. After reminding yourself of this and determining and determining to keep your will clearly in mind, tell yourself with gentle firmness and quiet certainty, I will there be light. Let me behold the light that reflects God's will and mine. Then let your will assert itself, joined with the power of God and united with yourself. Put the rest of the practice period under their guidance. Join with them as they lead the way. In the shorter practice periods again, make a declaration. Right? In the shorter practice periods again, make a declaration of what you really want. I will there be light. Darkness is not my will. This should be repeated several times an hour. It is most important, however, to apply today's idea in this form immediately you are tempted to hold a grievance of any kind. This will help you let your grievances go instead of cherishing them and hiding them in the darkness. <coughs> and I really like, um, let your will assert itself. Where are we? Hang on a second. Okay, so after reminding yourself of this and determining to keep your will clearly in mind, tell yourself with gentle firmness and quiet certainty. Now, that's the way it is. Tell yourself with gentle firmness and quiet certainty. That's how it is. Every time, um, and I'll say I, right, keeping it singular, every time I enter into a moment of meditation, there's always a precedence to that where I'll just sit quietly for a moment and I'll just reaffirm to myself with a determination and a quiet certainty right, and a firmness. Right? I'm reclaiming my power, okay, and a firmness that this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm attempting to go beyond this level of consciousness into the quietness beyond it. Okay, through that stillness of mind, learning to still those thoughts, quiet those thoughts, so that that little uh, gap can or whoosh. <laughs> and in my con, and you can't explain this. Trying to talk about stuff in mind to someone who hasn't yet had an experience of whoosh, <laughs> it's very very difficult. But you'll discover it. And I remember the very first time through um, the conscious application of this that. Uh, I had a whoosh moment or, a, or an entering in moment into, into um, the level that's beyond consciousness or, or the doorway through consciousness, I guess. A doorway would be, or a portal um, in my mind. I didn't know what it was. I was like, holy cow, what was that? 
and then there was just this flash of blazing light and my body was like thrown back, literally thrown back, physically thrown back about three feet. And uh, that still occurs today in some regard, not as uh, not as violently perhaps or, or as emphatically as that, but um, remembering that the body was made as a defence against the light, when you actually begin to have those light moments entering into that light level, the miracle level, which is below the subconscious, um, the reaction in the body can look like anything. And uh, I remember once sitting in, um, for a period of about three months, I think this went on, and um, sitting listening to lectures or talks from uh, one of my teachers, and my body would simply convulse uncontrollably as if I was having spasms or um, epilepsy or some kind of thing. I'd be sitting there and be like, oh, oh. And my, my, my mind was truing up to that vibratory frequency that aligns with that portal, that doorway, um, automatically and just by itself. And um, every time I would kind of like peep through the keyhole, if you want to put it that way, you know, like peep through the keyhole into the light, um, it would hit me with a force, like it would, it would manifest through the body with a force that was just, I couldn't stop it. <laughs> it, was, it was both frustrating and annoying and at the same time uh, joyous and wonderful, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I would be, for, for a few days when it first started, sometimes I'd be walking down the street and my legs would just suddenly give out from under me. I'd have a thought about um, stillness or entering into the silence or something like that, just some singular kind of a thought that represents a singular framework or an altruistic framework of mind. And kapow, you know, whoosh. <laughs> and uh, it's still kind of the same today. I still get a bit of a shock or a jolt from... Um, it's to much lesser degree these days. So anyway, so that was uh, Lesson 73. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. That was pretty cool. And I'll see you for Lesson 74 soon.